friends that would give each other shirts off our back to this day. So believe me, I know the value of a good friend. It's a beautiful thing. As beautiful as it gets in this world. That's the greatest reward we get, right? Especially when your spouse leaves you, your beloved leaves you. But, um, yeah, I love, um, I love people. But, you know, I have been watching the evil unfold and having its day in America for over half a century. And, yeah, that's frustrating to me. I make no bones about it. That's no secret to anybody. And I want the worm to turn so badly. But I've got to calm down. I've got to turn to God. I Myself, I practice what I preach. Turn to God and say, God, please help me to keep cool. And remember, things will unfold in your time. All I can do is fight the good fight. But I don't have to lose my peace at the same time because that's what I'm doing. You see, it's hurting me. when If I come across in a way that's unbecoming, I'm losing my peace. God's taking it away. I'm not representing him properly. I'm not reflecting him properly. And I know it. And I can't escape it. And it's like, that's a hard pill for me to swallow, to admit that I don't like myself. I don't. I don't like the way I come across. And I know it's just, I'm trying so desperately, but it's like you're drowning and, you know, people are trying to throw you life preservers and God, you know, above all, you don't know, you know, it's weird. It's just a weird feeling to feel like I can't be exactly who I want to be, that I'm going to always live with this sense that I've got to come across in the self-righteous arrogant haughty manner that i don't mean to I'm frustrated perturbed always talking about negative poignant depressing things i don't like it i mean i'd like i'd like to shut up tomorrow i just need to hear somebody talking the way i do because i would not bother doing this video series that i've done these years if i didn't feel what i had to convey was imperative very important information i want people empowered i learned a long time ago that no man is an island to himself that I, that I really need to be happy. I'm a selfish man, and it's not the kind of thing I can go alone. I must help other people to be empowered, to realize you can be happy. Put your finger on what's bugging you. Chances are it has something to do with money. If it's inorganic, if it's artificial, then it's money. It creates unnecessary human suffering. Unnecessary is an absolute term. That means it's not needed. It's not necessary. It's invented. It's made up. It's conjured up. It's concocted. Do you understand? At the hands of evil men to make your lives miserable so they can steal from you. They create chaos and makes you miserable when somebody is forcing unnecessary suffering upon you with financial means. That's their method of operation, the modus operandi. That's how they get the job done. Very powerful, very effective at controlling the population, controlling the people through the money supply. The power of the purse, man. It is, and it's miserable. So once you put your finger on it like I have a long time ago, then you can help other people put the finger on what's causing them undue, undeserved suffering, unnecessary suffering. And that probably has everything to do with money being involved. They want to serve humanity. You bet they do. Wild horses couldn't stop them from serving humanity because they've got an instinct. They've got an irresistible urge and desire, a craving to be appreciated, to be... That's it, man. It's a, that's all you need to know about the fact that the system can't break down because people need to work. They need to serve. They must be appreciated. They cannot be satisfied. They cannot. That's it, man. We must serve. That's how deep your need to work is. And what need is there for money when that's the reality that God has imposed upon us? That's it, man. It's your instinct. It's your nature. It's intrinsic in who you are as a human being. You must, you're compelled, utterly compelled, irresistibly compelled to be appreciated, to be useful, to be needed, to use your God-given talents for other people. Have fun, man, work together. It's, eternity is comprised of a series of moments. We should all be going to work with a bounce in our steps and joy in our hearts and a song on our lips. And it's frolicking on God's green earth the way he wants us to. Instead, what? Look at all this crap, this artificial, made up, conjured up crap shoved down our throats from birth. Telling us, of course, you got to cost a living. It's only logical. We'll train you as we want to. You need keys because you got, there's a handful of petty thieves that would dare steal all your stuff, come into your house. And, you know, oh, of course you need money. It's sophisticated trading. Why would you ever want to have a society without money? Why would you want progress relative to capitalism? Why would you want to bother defining what is progress relative to true capitalism? 
Does it create a rising tide of prosperity that lifts all boats? Or is it, uh, you know, is it just really fascism in disguise? We call it capitalism and say you're un-American if you don't prescribe to it. And the wealth imbalance, of course, that's normal. It should always increase. And the poverty increases. We just got more and more defective, weak people, weak links in a chain. Social Darwinism, rule of the day. They need to go die under the bridge. Get rid of those weak links in the chain. That's what you do with weak links. You weed them out, man. Good luck standing before your owner someday, my friends. I mean, you know, if that's your philosophy, your belief system, God help you. Remember hearing about superbugs many, many years ago? They said this is coming because of all the antibiotics and crap we've been using. Isn't, isn't this coronavirus, if it's for real, hint of something like that? You know, when I excoriate, I am trying to impress upon people. It's kind of, you know, one of my methods. But I don't like to come across arrogant. I like to come across warm and fuzzy and, and easy, you know, palatable, the stuff I teach and preach. But I don't feel that often. But I do like people to know I, if I could be more cool, calm, and collected, I think I'd be a lot more effective. And I'm really, really, really going to try hard to do that. But, you know, I need to remind myself, too. I need to impress upon myself every day the urgency of, of addressing the problems, confronting the problems, fighting this good fight and getting, you know, gravely serious about it and realizing we're up against monsters that really do want to commit genocide on an unthinkable level. I mean, well over 90% of the people, I mean, we're talking in the billions they would like to see gone. They don't need us anymore. That's what a handful of people in very high, powerful places are. So thank God you got the military and law enforcement on the side of we the people. Jesus Christ, thank God, thank God for good people. Thank God for a good God. man. We can all be very grateful for that. You know how many people have what they call skilled jobs, and I could teach you in 30 minutes. Do you know that? I could probably teach you how to sail a boat in 30 minutes. Okay, that would be a good. You, I wonder how much that pays to be able to, you know, learn learn sailing. You know, I could draw it out over a month and charge you a thousand bucks, right? But um, you know, I could also do it pretty quickly. But um, you know, it's just like anything else. I could teach you how to ride a zero-point turn lawnmower. At first, you get, oh, my God, I'll never learn how to, you know, moving the handles around. You don't know how, whoa, this is hard. You're a genius. You've learned how to ride one. But within 30 minutes, you'll be, you're, the brain is amazing the way it works. You, and the same with heavy equipment. You could drive the biggest heavy equipment or a jet fighter plane. You could fly in within 30 minutes probably of education. And we're, uh, humans are amazing creatures, amazing. So when you call somebody unskilled, you need to make a big deal because you're skilled labor. Hell, a monkey could learn how to do plumbing. Well, not literally, but you know what I mean? It's just it, not that hard. You know, I think Trump might have a little autism, too, Asperger's. And I understand his son, um, what's his name? I can't remember his son's name, but Barron. Uh, he, uh, rumor has it that he's got a little degree of uh, autism, too, but uh, that Asperger's. But for Trump to say something like, uh, you know, to Peter uh, Alexander, you know, that you're a bad reporter. I mean, that's kind of arrogant. Uh, and, uh, you know, you hurt people's feelings. And you don't want to hurt people's feelings. You try to do it in a different way. But it also could be the fact that I understood he was drinking about a six-pack of this soda with the diet soda with the aspartame in it. causes brain damage. And I told him, said a long time ago, get away from that crap. Whoever knows him ha has a lead to him. Get it, that message. Don't ever drink that crap, man. Wood alcohol. Look what uh, the famous uh, brain surgeon, the neurosurgeon, uh, uh, what's his name, Blaylock. Okay, Dr. R Russell Blaylock. Look what he has to say about aspartame and the damage it does to the brain and body and eyesight. Every it's bad news bears, man. In India, trying to enforce the, uh, the curfew or whatever, the quarantine on uh, with coronavirus. You see that one sadistic cop beating that guy and a couple of people and the other cops just sitting there watching him beat it. That's bull crap, man. We should excoriate that country for allowing that kind of crap. All right, friends, I got about a minute left. I'm going to get on to a couple of thoughts and then I got to I got to call it quiz. <laughs> Excuse me. When we must contend and endure a very impure so-called reality, if we can successfully prevail in only one aspect, it should be to keep a pure heart. So all we can control is our thoughts. So it starts there. The thoughts in the heart and in the mind come out our mouths and our behavior. Forgiveness of others is simple relative to forgiving ourselves. This is known as a God-given fail-safe ensuring 
we eventually learn the value of all-encompassing forgiveness. There is a significant difference between taking advantage of God's amazing grace and taking it for granted. Once you figure out that life is eternal, the big question is, how are you going to spend all that time? All right, friends, that's it. I got to call it quits. Have a great day, great weekend, a great life. I love everybody. I want the best for everybody. There's no shortage of best because we're all 